Krishna. I'm an engineering manager uh, on the PowerShell team. And today we are going to talk about all the good stuff you guys are doing and good stuff you guys using with PowerShell and communities. Um, so high level, there are only three things. Your impact to the PowerShell five things you are making better, either with the product or the life of other IT pros and developers and whoever <laughs> is using PowerShell, and how we are working through doing things in open source with GitHub and PowerShell code and what is there there will be one or two announcements which I think we talked about a couple of uh, sessions and how we do things when we when you guys contribute stuff and it goes to the gallery what processes happen in the background what are the things we are doing and a bit of forward looking what's going to expect next so PowerShell 5 Things are happening at rapid pace. Here is just a history of rapid pace. We have released five versions of WMF5 previews starting last year, all the way to this February, and the recent one was the August production preview. So I have worked in PowerShell for four releases. In none of those releases, we did more than three CTPs equivalent. So this is the by far the best or most rapid pace release. There are certain things we still are learning from it. We are not reached the point where we want it to. Rapid releases with the bugs and quality and things we want to catch early. But you guys are helping us out by doing more than 100,000 downloads of combined these six releases. That's how many times people have downloaded it. And it's phenomenal when people looked at, when we pulled this report, like, are you sure there's no extra zeros here? <laughs> that looks a big number. And the bugs when people started using it whether they are mvps whether they're not mvps they are reporting those bugs on connect we look through them we are looking them more proactively and that's another area we have to say oh we just don't have to write code faster we have to read the feedback and the bugs and reports that people are doing even faster so we can fix them in a timely manner so one uh, one point here is um, there are a lot of bugs identified by community more than 40 but 40 of uh, at least for uh, 40 of the bugs that we, we have taken and fixed in the product, in the previous. So there is a lot of good feedback coming on the connect. We didn't have opportunity to go through every connect bug and then address it in this release, but keep uh, uh, giving us the feedback. We will um, look into the feedback and then in upcoming releases, we will be able to address them. So a big thank you. And just to look at things that people have asked for either in this release or previous release, we ha which have been incorporated in PowerShell 5, is people wanted a repository where they can put their code, share it, and that's the PowerShell gallery. If you look at the command lists, those are the things people ask. Some of them looks very easy, but still, people wanted that e things to become more easier. Um, and we added things which were in existing command lists. No new line was a big thing. Yeah, like, when you do it in WordPad, Notepad or whatever thing is fine. But when you automate it, those extra lines, that hurts a lot. <laughs> uh, similarly, the uh, parameter on the get child item and on get process, you can figure out all the way to file version. And that's one I use a lot where some like, which build of Windows you're running? I'm like, I don't know. I just do it there on a DLL and says, give me all the list and the file version info has the build number in the bracket. So that, that's something. And obviously, as Krishna mentioned, we fix a lot of bugs. We are trying our best to respond back on the connect as soon as we fix bugs saying, hey, it's internally fixed, should be available in the next one. And when the release goes out in a couple of weeks, we go through our backlog and say, oh, whatever is fixed, let's close them. So you'll see those things are happening faster than what we have been doing in the past. So thank you, keep doing that and keep providing us feedback. Uh, so if you have noticed, like uh, in April 2015, we have started this initiative of GitHub PowerShell. So I will give you a little bit history. Like uh, before uh, uh, Satya, uh, Microsoft was uh, uh, seen as uh, not uh, uh, accessible to the community. So, but PowerShell from version one, we are more accessible to the community. Okay. So, but with this release, we want to open our efforts and then we want to uh, work and collaborate with you more often than uh, uh, previous releases. Earlier releases, the opportunity to connect with the uh, community and other uh, PowerShell enthusiasts was through CTP and other channels. But in this release, what we are trying to do is we want to uh, put our code out there and then collaborate with you. 
in the in that front right uh, we accepted a community uh, developed uh, uh, module called pester and uh, we are the first team who took this module and then put it in windows so a big uh, big thank you to dave white uh, wherever uh, he is um, he helped us a lot uh, in uh, uh, getting this getting this happen so dotnet team does uh, api stuff but this is a game changer for us like getting a module that is developed out there and then shipping it in windows okay so we did that and ps readline is one of uh, another popular module which is written by jason who is a powershell team member he did his in his part time it was in uh, uh, codeplex or uh, in his own project and then we were able to ship it in box on windows 10 so these are the two initiatives or uh, two things that we took out from um, uh, outside and then shipped as part of windows and we hope the same things will continue in uh, in future okay so in april as i said we have started this github.com powershell uh, uh, initiative like uh, we are putting a lot of modules lot of dsc resources script analyzer and some other modules are there on that uh, repository in uh, on that organization on github i will walk you uh, through that process but in the last 3 4 months right we have more than 60 repos we have more than 600 pull pull requests uh, that were uh, uh, accepted into that git repos and uh, over 120 contributions i think the last time when i checked there are like uh, uh, 95 of them are already merged from community like community contributions were merged and there are around 20 of them are open so which is a tremendous response in the last four five months so we encourage um, uh, you guys to participate and then we will want to we all, we all want to collaborate with you so how many of you here actually use github so you guys all know all the git commands and stuff you don't have to <coughs> As you may have noticed, this is the GitHub location for PowerShell uh, repos. So one of the things that we did is uh, <clears throat> we have integrated all the repos to a build system called AppWire. So our our thinking behind the development model is we have three multiple branches like master branch, which is the branch from where we stabilize and release and continuous daily development will happen in some form of dev, dev branch and from dev branch you uh, create other branches so what we have done is uh, we have integrated uh, this continuous build like um, there is, as you can see there are a lot of uh, contributions coming from uh, within microsoft outside of microsoft to this repos so it is um, to make uh, the uh, build systems uh, the quality high right so what we did is um, whenever there is a change that is being made, uh, there is a um, bot that basically figures out there is change coming in. It will build the stuff and run the test cases and let us know the what the quality is. So before the check-in happens, all these things are run. Like you can see uh, build started, right? So build started and you can see here, uh, so build succeeded with zero warnings, zero errors. And uh, after the build succeeds, uh, we basically run all this, uh, all the, since Pester is in Windows and Pester, uh, we are, uh, uh, Pester is the go-to platform for writing uh, tests for PowerShell content. All that, uh, we recommend uh, all the repos on GitHub to use Pester-based test cases. So you have Pester-based test cases, build happens, and then we run all the Pester test cases. So before, uh, when, uh, when there is a pull request being submitted, so let me go to your pull request, okay? So 183 closed on script, this is a script analyzer project. So there are 183 closed pull requests. So if I take a pull request, here you can see, um,
when the request comes before we do the merge we already know the data whether the build succeeded whether the test passed or failed so without a human actually doing something with the packet because of the system we were able to get the data with with uh, with very little work from us so once that system pass we basically check whether uh, um, uh, code review basically we do the code review and then we basically merge it currently the system is uh, there are 60 repos all the 60 repos are divided into different teams so for ds resources there is a uh, there is a team karol and sergey they are monitoring the pull request for script analyzer ragu is monitoring the pull request so okay. our thinking is currently uh, uh, all these repos are uh, ultimately we are merging uh, the pull request back to the master branch so we are exploring a way how we can give some admin rights to community and then let community do the make the decisions of merging uh, merging merging stuff back to the master branch and other other branches so, so that is the so just to think about it yeah. basically people who are experts in specific areas they will yeah. be responsible for making sure the pull request that gets is a good quality is the right change and make those people owners for those specific projects or approver not owners but approvers for those pull requests so right now everything is microsoft owned but the idea is to just open it up based on people's expertise and areas of contributions and make them owners so they can also help out and make things faster Nice. So, changing the topic a uh, little bit. So, as you can see here in this first script analyzer, right? There are 562 commits, seven branches, three releases, and uh, nine contributors. So, the way uh, another thing that we are doing is to manage. Like there are like lot of issues also. If you can see, there are 48 <coughs> issues um, for this for this just one repo. If you combine it with 60 repos, there are a lot of issues. Uh, so the way we are tracking issues uh, issues on GitHub is by using labels. So we have different labels like bug, uh, upper grabs, uh, discussion, um, new. I mean, for script analyzer, it's new rule kind of new feature kind of thing. So the idea behind that is uh, if in in uh, GitHub issue there is no way to track to tell hey this is uh, a bug or a feature request or uh, a question kind of thing so we are using labels to uh, track those so if there is a discussion uh, what we are doing is uh, for at least for this script analyzer project and for other projects we want to create uh, uh, community meetings uh, in this case we are doing community meeting once in three week three weeks and in the community meeting we are discussing all the open topics and then uh, if something is closed we are basically uh, changing the title to up for grabs right if we are if we have owner we are assigning that owner if if uh, we want some help we are putting it as up for grabs like that <coughs> and i want uh, to uh, give you a brief uh, uh, intro of how, what git commands are how git commands are and how to use them so how many of uh, you know about um, use git commands a few here okay and i want to ask here also sure cool <laughs> <laughs> so few there so i think uh, maybe hopefully you will learn something about git today i have five comments to show you so let me ask one question while he goes to that what what tools do you use for your Git? Do you use the Git command line or? Git command line, source tree, and Visual Studio. Okay. Source tree is free and graphical. Anybody else has? Yeah, I use source tree, Visual Studio. Okay. Get for Windows. Get for Windows. Get shell. Oh, yeah. The Git shell and the Git UI. Okay. Yeah. Yes. okay. So I'm going to use Git command line today. So I'm not going to use UI. So, right. Okay. No. Okay. And Git command line is what I get when I install Git for Windows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So when you install Git for Windows, you get both the command line and the UI. Yeah. Um, if you are new, you can start with UI. It will teach you <coughs> the stuff, but it will not tell you the commands under the covers. And there's good help there. But when you get comfortable and you want to do things faster, command line is the way. That's way easier, but. Definitely, the UI is good to get started. 
get started on that go for it. to get started with the github right we have um, created this uh, markdown page it's like a document it's on dsc resources getting started with github.md uh, this walks you through the installation of all the steps also um, but i'm going to put it in action now okay so i'm going to go with a issue here in one of the dsc resources in x dsc resource designer so there are um, six bugs uh, five four four bugs identified here and the others i think there is some discussion going on so i'm going to pick one of the bugs here the bug here is test xdsc schema pass should be case insensitive so to me uh, the explanation here is to me it does not make sense. so there is some bug running test dsc xdsc schema with this path that is the bug okay so now before we start i want to repro the bug so the first thing that i'm doing here is if x dsc resource designer is on my machine this is um, sorry gmo is get, get module get module x dsc resource designer list available is whether it is in, on the system so it is on the system so now let us run that test uh, x dsc schema and then path let us take um, any path windows powershell yes window system 32 windows powershell yes. modules yeah. or you can use dollar ps home yeah yeah that's easier but that's fine <laughs> okay there are some great powershell bugs <laughs> <laughs> thank you these are dsc resources and uh, msft msft that's yeah yep so this one <coughs> is succeeding with true whereas the bug says if i capital capital it fails yeah it failed with the capital it failed it should be case sensitive right so now the first thing that i do i mean i want to fix this bug this is the bug i ab i am able to repro now i see the bug i want to fix it so the first command to remember is git clone you are cloning a repo from uh, the uh, from from the from uh, github right so you go to the next ds is a project space there is a little thing helper here so this you don't see but this one you can see the copy it using copy to clipboard you copy to clipboard and then because of the coolness of ps read line you can control v in the same place okay control v so the owner of the github right here there are two branches so dev branch and master branch so the, the owner has the flexibility to say which one is the default in this case owner has said dev branch is the default so that by default when you do clone you are cloning from dev not from master so that master is intact so master is not going to uh, So master, is, master is the branch where things go from dev to master, and from master we publish to PS. Publish, yeah. So you don't want to make changes and make things fail on the master directly. The plan is everything goes in the dev, and when test pass happens and somebody looks at it, it goes. Okay. So everybody got um, this Git clone. The second thing that I want to talk about is, so this all these repos are like public repos. Okay. In general. Uh, the practice is more. I mean, some repos do, but most of the repos they don't give public write access. Okay, the recommendation is to basically create your own fork. So to do the fork, I I have to sign in as uh, my login. So let me sign in as myself. I have this weird account. so and then i'm doing fork here 
So I'm forking in, I have Windows PowerShell account also, but I'm forking into my username account here, okay? If you have multiple uh, uh, um, accounts, you can select. Um, I'm select, selecting on myself, okay? Now I see this XDS, DS resource designer here. The next thing that you have to do is, the, the, the problem that I described is, you may not have right access. So learning fork is good. Once you create fork, you have to add that remote. Again, um, copy to clipboard. You have to tell Git, hey, I'm adding a remote and uh, remote uh, fork by doing this command, uh, this, uh, this command, git remote, git remote add. You can give any name that you want. I said my here, and then um, the, the copy that you got from the clipboard, okay? <coughs> You have to take the URL from your user account and get. Yeah, I, I took it from. See, this is a user account. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm. Inside your repository, right? You have to CD into... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. yeah, thanks, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. So there is git status. Um, yeah. Git status, git status tells you which branch you are in. Then you say git remote add my... Okay, there you go. Now do git status. That's you you haven't made any changes. So it's yeah. So now, if you are making one fix, then you can do um, fix based thing. But the recommendation is to basically create a branch. You make multiple fixes into the branch, like even a single line, single line changes to the branch. And once you are completely done adding test cases, adding all the fixes, then push that branch to the original branch. So for that reason, I'm creating a branch called um, <coughs> git checkout. The command is git checkout dash b. Dash b is branch. What happened? It's a horrible command line interface. <laughs> it's really the yeah. worst command line interface. So again, see the good git status here. Uh, on branch, my branch, nothing to commit it. So there are no changes, nothing to commit it. Yeah. There is a quick module called Pushkin. Yes. So yeah. Show you the branch. And so one point, which is a, a good point, is if you install Poshkit, which essentially on PowerShell uh, prompt, it changes the prompt to say which branch you are in, how many files have changed, added, and deleted. It gives you a very uh, visual view on a command line by saying. It has three columns and it tells the number and with the color red and green. That doesn't it do that uh, standard if you start the uh, partial uh, GitHub? Yeah, so for that you have to install the Posh Git module. Yeah, just installing a GitHub uh, client, you get a link on your desktop, I think, that does okay. that, I think. Yeah, I have not. I'm very new at this. So I have not played with PostGate, so. Yeah, once yeah. you install PostGate, it, it, you have to add a line in your profile and it loads anytime you launch PowerShell. Yeah. But was it necessary to create the remote explicitly? Because I think that when you clone, it creates a remote. No, you have to explicitly create the remote. No, you can fork it. Then fork it, fork, fork it, yeah. Fork it, then clone it. Yeah. Yeah, fork it and clone it, yeah. A default remote called Origin, right? Yeah. yeah. So then you can't get your changes from the, from the official. Repository um, into your local branch because you need to see, pull both from your repository right. and to the partial order. Okay, okay, so you have to explicitly create a remote with a different name. Yeah, yeah, that two remotes so you can open two So places. if you do a fork and do a clone, then you're just working with your branch. If you go the remote route, then all the changes that are happening, they come automatically to your branch and you're working with the latest code. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. so. Yeah. <laughs> So coming back to this thing, right? So now if I do dir here, I have all the source code for XDS, uh, DSC resource designer here, right? So now um, what I'm trying to do is, 
the repro that we made is from a module that is on the system so i want to repro using the, this module so you do a ipmo xts series of design based one dash force and if you do it's bo both the same thing okay. right that was the latest so now you see that you have two modules loaded one is from the module path and one that you actually loaded from the github direct so so i'm going to open isc to put some break point uh, we are in this directory right so now uh, ps edit so here i see files like psd1 is basically technical usually it's a module manifest file strings.psd1 is basically is looks like some strings strings for the uh, data and test.ps1 looks like some test <coughs> cases so probably the content should be in this uh, ps m1 module file so i'm going to do ps edit xdsc resource designer ps m1 file sorry would you not create your test to test first yeah that's a good point <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly good point yeah first when you do development it's always good practice to first write the test case let it fail then uh, fix the uh, fix the thing that is always a good practice okay it's like test it's called test driven development good point and, and given the time we yeah. have will not yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason i ask yeah. is there's not many tests up on the yeah so uh, th that's a good point so uh, the point is there are not many tests so when we started doing the dsc resources and creating bunch of dsc resources ourselves that was sometime in 2014 time frame and that time we were not writing tests we were just validating ourselves so yes uh, that is a hole we have from all the previous resources but moving forward any time somebody mm -hmm. does a pull request one of the criteria we say is that, hey can you write test for your changes at least if you can write for everything that's even better but at least for your changes so that is something we are going to slowly fill but new modules will not be accepted without test so what it is um, the the uh, the bug is in test xdsc schema so i put a breakpoint in xdsc <laughs> schema um, the first line in xdsc schema and then i import more import module the code that i'm uh, downloaded from git and then you basically run the same commandlet so the same command that we run uh, was here right so test hey what was the f8 uh, f8 is uh, the toggle the break uh, f9. f9 no 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 no, no. Uh, yeah. just use your history uh, h h, h. It is an alias. Oh, yes. You can call invoke get history. Or no, it's basically a uh, shortcut to get history. Uh -huh. So you get all the history that, and you do the same thing. PS home um, modules um, PS desired state configuration DSC resources MSFT archive resource. It doesn't matter any resource, right? Yeah. So schema, and then do. Got the breakpoint here. Now we are in ISC, right? So I can do F10, F11, uh, the the normal debugging commands. Yeah. So now it's calling another internal function. So if if you are comfortable with PowerShell doing on the uh, on the command line, doing this stuff should be the same. I mean, it's it's basically I opening ISC. Everything is PowerShell. Because DSC resources, most of the DSC resources I saw. they are powershell scripts so you can you can you can do this you okay. know debugging and you can do this so that's just uh, just want uh, we wanted to basically show you how easy it is to use existing tools to basically go about it so now i am so this is the first method in this internal function this doesn't seem i don't see anything problem here it's just an assignment here The next thing is test path. We are running test path. Go in the. No, oh, yeah, sorry. Third one. This one. Yes. <coughs> so let us see what it is written in. <laughs> so here. <laughs> good path equals true. Good path. Good path. The value of good path is. Uh oh. No, it's kind of complicated. Yes. okay good path is true okay so this is true which we expect it to be true schema is basically dollar schema is 
because of debugging you can do, do all this like uh, you can see the variables at runtime so schema is like capital s here we know the path is good so wow. now there are three conditions here one is dollar ev now good you, path. you see how we write code <laughs> so what is dollar ev so dollar ev is null. is null so this is not true dollar good path was true got dollar good part uh, is true so not of got dollar good part is false so this condition itself is not for is is false now this one is schema c match what is c match i don't know. yeah so if you don't if you don't know c match you do help c match so it looks like everybody know its case sensitive match so if you don't know you do help c match there and you got the idea so you are doing case sense to match here so you basically stop debugging uh, f5 yeah it's there the same error that we saw earlier right so now change this to in sense to match and you have to reimport the module ipmo like import import Equal mod no. ul <laughs> x dsc resource designer psd1 since the module is already loaded you have to do force t reload t reload t re reload and do that and now let us run the same command again since i have history up up key and <coughs> run the command again oh okay. we have hit the breakpoint so i'm going to do f5 okay now there is this seems like a different error now so so now i know the pattern right so i use some somebody in that thing use c match now that thing is look control f c match where 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 else, where else c match is getting used so there are a lot of places where c match is getting used so you so got you, the idea. you got the idea right so the same pattern is applying yes, here yeah i think i have not another issue what dollar ev for error variable uh, that's a local variable yeah. that they define dollar ev equals null and then they're running a command and yeah, passing the error the object error into the into that so they are defining that variable up front and then checking if it's null or not. Okay. You you don't have to, but if you are in a strict mode, then that's the best practice. So now we have made some changes, right? Now see git status. But shouldn't you have test the name <coughs> of the variable? Dollar Instead EV is defining the variable. When you call the commandlet, then you don't have to use dollar. You have to just say EV. EV. Yeah, and you called it with dollar EV. Not when you are calling the command. When you are evaluating the expression. But if that is the case, that's another bug. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to switch back to the command line because uh, in command line you will get uh, highlights. So if you do git status, so you see that this this is modified. Uh, I mean you. You cannot see that, but yeah. See, see this, is, this will be shown in red. It will, this will be shown in red. Um, that means like you have modified the file, but you have not committed any changes. So the way to do the to do that is git commit dash a is all commit all the changes and then you give a comment comment is uh, fix for uh, bug in test um, x dsc schema and now you know why that issue was not fixed we were holding it up for the end so now again see the git status so it's so on branch my branch nothing to commit working working directory clean okay once so if if you want to see uh, the changes you can see there is a tool called git k dash a it will show you a ui it will show you like what exactly you changed my eyes my eyes so you will see the entire structure here so where is coming the right Simon's origin. It's my and branch. Simon, who's here, he has made contributions as well, so you can see his name. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. 
Yeah, I didn't knew about Git Kay as well, so. <laughs> okay. And then once you uh, once you know that hey, the diff is I mean the code. This is red line is basically the old one, green line is the new one. So once you know you were the changes, only the changes that you made are here. You can do uh, another command called Git push. So git push will basically, um, I'm not going to do it here because it requires uh, me typing some passwords and all. I'm not, I'm not going to do, do it here. So if you do git push, uh, it will push it to your uh, uh, branch, uh, your branch. Then depending on if you want to fix other bug, fix that bug, git push like that. And then once you're done with all the changes, uh, request for pull request from the repo. Questions? Easy, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, poshkit uh, has commands which are more like verb dash noun. You can do that. It's your call. I, I installed it and the only reason I installed and use it is because it gives me the coloring in the prompt. I still use the git command. I don't use Search all. for uh, git in your uh, module. Uh, in your prompt. Windows key. In git. I'm sure I got a, a, com a git command line. When okay. I installed it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's, when, that's when you installed the GitHub for Windows. Yeah. yeah, you get Yeah, so I think. Uh, uh, okay. just, yeah, it's Windows and it's GitHub. So what, whatever we did, we we documented here. Whatever I should document it here. We sh we downloaded it from this location, git-cm.com. Uh, download uh, Windows. <coughs> so it is. What's the, what was the one? Uh, I'll I'll click it one second. This one. I think people are mixing up GitHub with Git, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So G yes. GitHub is one uh, repo that is your, I mean, one, one form is using Git. So Visual Studio also has Git. Git, I mean, CodePlex supports Git. So um, do you want to explain GitHub versus Git or? But the uh, code is on GitHub, right? Yes. Code is on GitHub. So, yeah. It GitHub. uses Git um, source code repository things. Right. So you can have multiple ways to host yeah. Git. GitHub is one, Visual Studio is another, and my Git server, are, there are a bunch of things. Yes. And they have different workflows on top of right. the version control system. Yes. Oh. And uh, since somebody mentioned, I'll just show it briefly. This is the GitHub for Windows that once you install it, you get a UI eventually whenever it comes up. Um, that gives you nice, even, yeah. And here you can see this tutorial, you go to plus sign, but you guys are all PowerShell. You don't need <laughs> uh, yeah, you Okay. Again, all of this is documented in this um, website, in this site. Yeah. So ten we'll minutes. share it. We have 10 minutes. Okay. Bye. So going back to the slides, we... <coughs> okay. So, as I said, there are like 120 contributions came from community and uh, we want to thank everybody in the community who made this happen. So I want to give a big clap to all these people who made this happen. Do you guys have GitHub handles? Yeah. So if you know somebody, yes, but we, we couldn't figure it out. Figure out, yeah. Complete names, but I know I can see some. Some names here. Yeah. Yeah. We did some announcement about you and they were too yeah. happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about GitHub PowerShell and then we talked about all the labels, right? right. So development, discussion, bug, duplicate, uh, question, all those things. He thought we, we finished the session. We talked about, yeah, question. Right. So the issue is not marked up for grabs. It's not supposed to be work on, right? Uh, right now, I mean, yeah. So right now, there is there is some question uh, pending, maybe. That's why we didn't say yeah. up for grabs or assent. There are two conditions, right? Up for grabs is for we were looking for some help from outside, or there might already be an owner assigned. So there are two places. And again, different repos are using different tags, so you will not see it like up for grabs in every repos. So there are still some differences because sub teams are doing their things differently. Mm -hmm. So if you try, they'll come and. No, so the, 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 the big thing is once, once you make a change and you do a 
pull request that's where they say okay finally you want something to be contributed if that's right they will if there's something typically people say oh that's great can you make this change or this doesn't look right can you think about it and yeah so i think so just to put it i think the, the github etiquette is normally you would post an issue and you discuss it before you went and did something you wouldn't normally just push code okay okay, okay. i'm not following that I let's move. Let's move on, guys. I I use a resource. It looks busted. I fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so that is GitHub is one change that we made in the last one year, right? And another big change is PowerShell Galaxy. So we started this project about uh, with there is there has been ask about uh, this uh, repository uh, since PowerShell version two. So finally we get a chance. We got a chance to open PowerShellGallery.com and. Uh, we have over 700 modules as of yesterday. I mean, it includes all the versions. There are 290, I think, unique modules. And if you include all the versions, there are 700 modules. And then there are over 80,000 downloads from this um, uh, PowerShell gallery. So to access PowerShell gallery, we shipped this PowerShell get module in WMF5. And PowerShell get modules uh, um, have commandlets like install module, find module, um, publish module. Um, and this PowerShell get module currently ships with only with PowerShell 5. So PowerShell 5 is in Windows 10 and WMF 5. Yeah. So I want to do one trick. Oh, yeah. So one yeah. show one trick there. Right. Yeah. So one thing that uh, as Krishna is doing is today whenever you try to use a command and you get an error, command not found error. So they, okay, that command is not in this box. And then you have to go out of the way and figure it out which module that command is coming from, find if it's on GitHub downloaded or if you copied it from somewhere else, find it and do it. And that's the magic is going to show how to see. eliminate all those steps. See, if you currently, let us say, I'm trying to find this command like convert to base, since we talked about base 64 yesterday, I was trying to figure out if there is any command that does convert to base 64. <coughs> so <coughs> there is no command on the base 64. Since PowerShell version 3, I believe, we have a command <coughs> hook for command not font. Okay? I have a little utility that does this. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll show. I have a module, psgallery command hook.ps1. So, so, in this module, there is a command called. Just to give you context, in version uh, 3, there was a pattern added to say if command is not found, people have opportunity to inject some code before we return the error. So they can catch that error and do magic. I will show you the code, but I want to show you the user experience, right? So here you don't know convert, <laughs> there is no convert to base 64. So if you have this hook for um, command not found and run convert to base 64, uh, 64. Key. Key. Missing a key in base. Okay, let us see. So what it's saying is convert to base 64 is not found on the current system. So it is trying to, so it is found, found convert to base 64 in the module PSCX on the repository PS gallery and it is authored by this developer and the project URI is this, do you want me to download? So with you, if you, if you have this uh, thing and if we have this hook, you, we can make the connection. Like if something is not there, we can inject and then we can, of course, we are giving a prompt here. So if you have prompt, you can always say suspend and do your inspections of that module offline. And then once you do the inspections, you can come back and then say, hey, I want to install that module. Go S yes, and then do that. And this is the second prompt which says, hey, this uh, repository is not registered as a trusted repository. Do you really want to download from there? And it says, sure, we know where it's coming from, who have written it, and and essentially it's yeah. hooking into install module, find module, and yeah. making it happen in one single step. So, um, what would happen if you have multiple modules exposing the same command? Uh, you will have, depending on how the code is written, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to show. One. So here in the in the find module, right? Since uh, uh, my our recommendation is is always find module is on the on the repository PowerShell gallery repository. So if you do this find module and hook it to only one repository, then you always trust the trusted repository. 
No, no, his question is given a repository, if there are multiple modules which implement the same command. Oh, in the same, if it implements multiple commands, um, multiple modules. The same you will say you will say multiple modules there. Right. <coughs> and then based on the code, you can say if I get more than yeah. one, I will throw an error or prompt the user to pick which one. You can decide what behavior. In this case, we are assuming it's one, so we just go. But question this two. hook module is not in PowerShell. Not yet. But no, no, the hook is there in PowerShell no, no. 3. This module, this module is not there in the gallery yes, or we'll, something. We'll put it. Uh, I believe Krishna has not written all the tester tests around it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's. <laughs> that, that's the biggest yeah. thing that is stopping me for uploading a couple of modules. I have not written tester tests, so I'll publish it on my repository. Once I have the tester test, then I'll only think of putting it there. So on the. Okay, so on the PowerShell gallery, right, we saw that there are 700 modules and then there are a lot of uh, downloads also coming from the PowerShell gallery. So behind the scenes, what we do is we basically do security scan of the modules. Once the once you once customer uploads the module uh, to the gallery, we do a security scan, antivirus scan and other security scans. And if we found anything wrong, we immediately uh, disable that module. So there is a delete button that is available to administrators, we delete that module. And then we send an email to the uploader saying that, hey, you have uploaded some uh, module that has security impact. So look at look at that. Mm -hmm. So well, one question about the anti antivirus scanning, mm -hmm. like uh, what kind of scanning engine are you using? Because I've, I've experienced lots of scanning engines that simply stall when they see a certain command, even though it's not used in a bad way. So currently we are using um, endpoint production right now. Okay. So we are evaluating other scanners to see if we have to, we are thinking about doing deep script anal analytics also. Okay. Uh, and um, yeah. Because one thing with IC steroids was that there was, um, that, that it chips with PSX from Microsoft. Yeah. And that is flagged as a virus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are using system endpoint production and then we are doing our, um, we wherever we know that it is safe, we are allowing like invoke mimic or something like that, we are allowing it. Okay. But others we are following. Okay, so that is security scan. We take it very seriously. The moment we know, we delete that module. So the other uh, uh, other kind of errors that we are seeing is we want to um, uh, an, uh, we want to be encourage best practices. So we back end we run script analyzer with this five rules and this five rules we worked with community um, uh, and together with community we identified these five rules and we are running that on all the modules. Uh, that are uploaded in the gallery and whenever we see uh, a module published module has uh, has uh, um, a violation of this rule we are sending an email to the owner publisher and then working with them to get the get the thing fixed so in future as the script analyzer gets um, solid and all the rules are solidified we want to uh, uh, include lot of rules but that, that, that also will happen with community. Like we will hold community meeting and then add on more rules to this list. So if you have suggestion on rules that should be included, send us, but there's, the more people, everybody has opinion and people sometimes agree on something and not on others. So that's holding on a couple of things. Uh, can you summarize again for which types of things that I want to upload to need tester tests? For DSC resources? Yeah. So we are running those rules for every module. Okay. We inspect if it is DSC resource, we run those three or four additional ones. Uh, but overall, there are five rules that we are running, only five at this point. Only okay, but I'll just, the question would be like, pester rules are efficient in, in area, in some areas, and you may not be able to use them in others. So would you be able to publish a module without pester tests at all? Yeah. Yeah, right now, yes. Okay. <laughs> but that, yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> we want to encourage people to write test cases also, but so that when po you will test my uh, run my pester tests if I add them. Yes, the as soon as you add a pester test through AppWare, it runs all those. Question: Should I really add my tests to my module? Because usually I have all my tests in my repository, but I don't put them in my module because I don't want to distribute so the my tests to everyone like end user. So that's a good question. Should I add my test with the module? I that I would say the answer is yes because once the user downloads. They can run your test as well to say what things it covers. It, it has a like uh, an Ethernet link to the your project URL. Right? But that's URL. extra step, right? It's it's a file. It's an additional it's file. Not long. It's just PowerShell. Yeah. 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 Okay. And actually, a lot of time people say, "You are giving me a module. Tell me the examples you have run or used for." So when I try to use it, it doesn't work. Either I can fix it and run your test before fixing. If someone wants to send you a uh, pull request, they've got the test there. Right? It also teaches people 
Yeah. So we have. <coughs> so we'll not have time to show this internal PowerShell gallery, but uh, I'll post it on um, GitHub. Uh, so we have written DSC resources to set up your own internal PowerShell gallery. You can set it up easily, and uh, I'll stop at here. Hemant worked a lot for this to demo this. On That's fine. <laughs> 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 no, no, I think I pushed the button. No, no, you're good. Stop pushing it.